In this video, I'm just gonna cover some of the basic troubleshooting steps that you can take with an IP camera system. Here, I just have a single IP camera. I have a ethernet cable connected to the first port on my system here. And as you can see at the top left-hand side, I have a fail to find network host error. Uh, now this error usually means that your camera is not completely powering up. Uh, you wanna refer to our troubleshooting guide for some steps that you can take to determine if your camera is powering on or not. Uh, here you can see in this example, obviously my camera's not powering on because it's not connected. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead and connect it here. And then after some time, we should see that it comes up with a video stream. However, in this video, I've gone ahead and emulated what would happen if you've changed the admin password on your system. So while this camera is booting up, I'm just gonna log in to my NVR by right clicking, clicking the main menu button. Here I've already logged into the admin user using the graphical user password or the written password that's found on the top of my NVR. And instead of switching the admin account, which is a common mistake that our customers make, so they come in here, they go into their user settings, and then they change the password for the admin user. Um, instead, that customer should click the add button here and then add their own user for their admin user. Um, because when you switch the admin password for the admin username, you can confuse your NVR and it can try to use this new password to log into the cameras. When our cameras are first connected, they will use the password that's on the NVR. So if you change this admin user and reboot your system, the IP cameras may not fully come up. And you'll see that on your grid screen. So I'm gonna back out by right clicking and right clicking again to get back to my grid screen here. My camera is now booted up and as you can see, it changed the error here. It was a network host cannot be found error. Now it's a wrong username or password error. And that's because on this NVR, I went ahead and changed the admin password. In order to fix this, I'm going to right click, go into main menu, come down here to the bottom left, camera. And here we can see the device registration screen. So I'm just gonna zoom in with my camera here so I can make the device registration screen or camera list here larger. Down at the bottom, you can see it's, it's detected my camera, but there is a red status. Usually when you get a red status, it means that it's a password error or it's a IP address error. But again, for this video, we're gonna keep it simple and it is just the password error. In order to fix this, we're gonna come down here to the D1 channel, click the modify button, and then I'm going to use the original password that was sent on my NVR. Again, this will usually be the password that's on the label on the top of your NVR if you've somehow changed your admin user password. So I'm just gonna type in that factory default password. You can click the connect button and then you can click the okay button. After a few seconds, you should see this red status turn into a green status as you just did. So I can right click I can right click again, and then here I can see I can now have a video from my camera. So again, what we did in this video is we first determined that our camera was not powering on because we got a network host out of reach error, or we just simply did not see anything on our screen. I then plugged my camera in after determining that the camera powered on, it just had a password error. So then I found, saw that I had a password error on my screen. I went into my camera list settings, I corrected the password for this camera's entry. Hopefully this video has given you a decent insight on how to troubleshoot a single IP camera. Keep in mind we recommend in our article to remove all other IP cameras and focus on one camera and that reduces the amount of variables. Thank you for watching. So in this quick tutorial I'm going to show you how to connect an IP camera. So if you have an NVR that has a different password than our default passwords at the time, they range from admin admin to admin and then 10ILTXYH. So if you try to connect a camera, let's say not purchased from us, that is guaranteed by your supplier to be compatible with our NVRs, or you're using our camera that we're saying it uses the private protocol on our NVRs. Uh, when you connect it to the PoE ports built into the back of the NVR, it's not going to pull up. So here's what I'm going to show you. I've got a camera right here, and I'm going to connect it to the PoE ports on the back over here. I've got a cable coming out, but my black cable goes into the PoE ports. 
when I connect it. Because this thing has a different password than my NVR, it's not going to pull up. So as I connect the cable, I'm going to wait for a minute or two. I'm also watching the top left quadrant. It's going to show me whether it's pulled up a camera or not. Now this screen, let me show you how I got to it. Once you're logged into your NVR, go to main menu and go to camera, go to registration, and you'll see it in here. Now I hit device search. It's finding another NVR I have on the network, but it's not showing me this camera yet. So let's just keep waiting. It finally took about a minute to a minute and a half and shows me invalid username here and shows the camera pulls up on the bottom and on the top. I didn't do anything, it just listed on the top and added it to the bottom automatically. And it has a red dot next to it. That means it's not connected. So here's what you need to do. Let's say if you don't have a listing on the bottom and it sort of looks like this, you can hit this and add or it'll keep on automatically adding it too. It'll just fight with you a little bit because these NVRs are built with a plug and play feature that automatically add cameras. As you can see, as I deleted it twice, it keeps re-adding it. The problem is it's gonna lock your camera out because it's using the wrong password. Using the password that's on, if you've purchased a camera from us, using the password that's located on the top of the camera box or you can email us and ask us what the password was when we configured it for you if we did you would put that password in here some cameras may ship uninitialized to you that's how they come from the factory at times we will configure them for certain customers who are not very uh, technologically literate we'll, we will initialize the cameras as courtesy so you don't have to do it because it takes certain know-how how to do it regardless of whether we have initialized the camera or not or if you're doing it yourself you would put the password in here in my case, my password is not my default this time. My username is admin and the password is different. Now I hit connect, I hit apply, and I hit okay. Now if you've tried this too many times, you'll get this message saying the account has been locked. What that means is you try to connect the camera too many times and you locked the user out. So what you need to do is disconnect the camera from the NVR or simply disconnect the cable going to the camera from the back of your recorder and then wait a couple of seconds and then reconnect it. So what that process does is the camera unlocks the user. go to camera registration directly as well. So okay. now I am just simply waiting for that. And here you go, the camera pulled up. So what the NVR does is it memorizes for this port the password I entered and syncs it with the MAC address or device name in this case or serial number and it remembers it so when you re-add the camera it won't lock you out. You could have also manually added it, the camera, but that won't provide you time sync and other features. So if it's a camera you bought from us, and it's an NVR you've bought from us, and you're trying to connect the two, this is the method we'd recommend doing because it allows the camera and the NVR to talk to each other better than doing the manual add method. And here you can also go into main menu and see that by doing such a method, you were able to modify, let's say, camera name, and it will populate it. As you can see, it changed it here. Change it from IPC to IPC 11. There are other things it lets you do. You can go into camera, image, and you can change 
image options, like for example, enabling WDR, doing an image flip. See, I flipped it 180 degrees. Let's go back to camera name, put it back to where it was, hit apply, hit okay, change it back. Gotta make sure you apply your changes. I'll put it back to where it was to conclude this video. I'll leave it as WDR. And that's it. It's just that easy. Thanks for watching.